Good morning, I'm Pastor Brian Johnston from Gospel Light Baptist Church, and I am so excited that our church is actually getting to meet in person this morning. After this second COVID lockdown that we've had, uh, it is, you know, of course, frustrating at times to not be assembling for church, but I'm glad that today is the first Sunday where we are have permission again to meet at the school. Our church meets on Sunday mornings at Richland Academy, a private school located at 11,570 Young Street, which is just sort of on the northwest corner of Young Street and Gamble Road uh, in the city of Richmond Hill, right next to the Lexus car dealership. There's a private school there and that's where we meet on Sunday mornings. Our church meets for services at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. We have our growth groups Bible classes for all ages. I'm currently teaching the adult Bible class, a series of lessons called A Firm Foundation, Building a Household of Faith on the Unchanging Principles and Truths of God's Word. Brother Hebert teaches a class for the teenagers, and then my wife is teaching a class for the children. Unfortunately, nursery-age children still at this point need to stay uh, with their parents uh, in wherever the parents happen to be during that time. And then from there, we move into 11 o'clock, our service where we come together for a time of special music and a message uh, from myself as the pastor. And then we have a lunchtime together uh, where food has been prepared. It will be served by people that are wearing a mask and gloves and uh, Folks will sit at different tables. Each household will sit at their own table and so on. And then at 1 p.m., we have our biblical financial study called Financial Management God's Way. And this is something that everybody can participate in. I believe that even children and teenagers can, can learn important truths from the Word of God that will help set them up for the future in learning how to manage money in a way that is wise and pleasing to the Lord and so on. So we invite you to come join us in person. Now the service that you're gonna watch here this morning, the message that you're going to hear preached online is a message that I preached in December of 2020 on the very last Sunday before uh, our church was uh, you know, forced into a lockdown situation again and unable to meet in person. And so this message you're gonna hear this morning has not been shown online before. It was preached in December 2020, recorded that day, and uh, we just saved it for a situation such as this when we might need to show it online. And so, again, I hope that the message this morning will be a blessing to you, and I encourage you as well. If you're comfortable doing so, come join us in person. Uh, we would love for you to be participating in our classes and services and so on in person. Uh, but if all you feel comfortable doing is watching online, then, then I pray that the classes and messages that we post online each week will be a blessing and help uh, in your life. To our church members, may I say that I love you very, very much. I'm praying for you. I want you to be faithful to the Lord. I pray that your heart is being stirred for the Lord during this time, that you will be committed with all of your heart to, to serving Christ and being faithful as we see the return of our Lord Jesus Christ drawing near. So let's be faithful in these times. Let's, let's trust the Lord. Let's obey the Lord. Let's seek to follow Him and give our best for Jesus Christ uh, during these days. If you have any questions, if you need anything, my cell phone number is 416-300-0735, 416-300-0735. Reach out to me, be glad to answer any of your questions about our church, about our situation of meeting again in person. If you don't understand any of that, if you have questions, if you're uncertain or scared about things, be glad to explain to you what we're doing. I believe it's incredibly safe for you to come and join us and uh, we'd love for you to do that. I pray that the message that you watch online this morning will be a help to you. Let me mention one more thing, that the uh, financial management God's way uh, lessons that we're teaching in person now at 1 p.m. On, on, on Sundays. Those are still being recorded and being shown at 6 p.m. on Sunday evenings for those that just watch online. And I, I pray that these, all of these things will continue to be a help to families in our community. God bless you. Well, thank you for being here this morning. <laughs> We're going to look in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 15. Those that end up watching this online at some point, I encourage you to, to share it, that others might hear a message from the Word of God. I want to speak to you this morning on maybe an unusual uh, topic. 
I want to speak to you about this. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Now, this isn't something I'm recommending. This isn't something I'm encouraging you to do. But I hope that from the, the points of this message and the thoughts that we look at in the Scriptures, I hope that you'll be challenged to be a Christian who doesn't just go to church, but somebody who truly has a heart for the Lord, a heart for God and for His Word, and loves Him and desires to live for Him and follow Him and serve Him with your whole heart. Let's have a word of prayer and then we'll, we'll read the Scriptures together. Heavenly Father, I thank You so much for allowing us to meet here this morning. I pray that You would speak to us through Your Word, that You would strengthen us and encourage us. Uh, Lord, if we're not right in our heart, if things are not right in our life, Lord, I pray that we would uh, repent, Lord, and turn to You and uh, have, a, have a joyous, blessed, wonderful Christian life sweet relationship with you and a, a nearness of heart a closeness to you Lord that is that is real and that is exciting that is wonderful uh, Lord help us not just to um, play a game called the Christian life but to truly live the Christian life as disciples and followers of Jesus Christ Lord help us to have a heart that is deeply in love with you Help us to turn from our sin and live righteous and live pure in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? I'm going to give you several, several things about that this morning. Several ways that it would be possible for you to go to church, attend church, and yet have a heart far from God. Look with me at Matthew chapter 15, and we're going to read verses 1 to 9. Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 to 9. The Bible says, Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and, and he that curseth father and mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by man, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah uh, prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their hearts, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Let me share with you some simple thoughts today that I hope will challenge us that we will not be like this, but that will truly have a heart for God. How is it possible for us to go to church and have a heart far from God? Let me give you some things. Number one, by following traditions instead of obeying God's commands. When we follow traditions instead of obeying God's commands and instead of obeying God's word, that's po then it's possible for us to go to church, do some things, and yet still have a heart far from God. Look here in Matthew chapter 15 at a couple things that Jesus said to this group of people. He said in verse 3, But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? He says, You're transgressing. You're, you're, you're going against the law and the commandments by your traditions. You, in other words, are, de are deeming that what man has to say and some man-made traditions and some things that you're following, that that's more important than what God says and what God's Word says. That's a, that's a fearful place to be in. It says as well at the end of verse number 6, it says, Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. By your tradition. 
In other words, their, their following man's traditions was superseding God's commands. Their following tradition was more important than God's word. If you want to keep a, a finger there in Matthew chapter 15 and also look at over to the Gospel of John chapter 14, we'll read one verse there. But you know, it is, is very possible for people to disregard God's word and instead follow man's word, follow traditions. Now, now Jesus told us this over in John chapter 14 and verse number 15. He made a very simple direct statement. He said this, if ye love me, keep my commandments. He didn't say if you love me, keep your traditions. He didn't say if you love me, follow, follow man. He didn't say if you love me, follow what some culture says. No, he says if you love me, keep my commandments. How is it possible for us to go to church and have a heart far from God? How is it possible for us to, to, to you know, play the Christian life and yet have a heart far from God? When we're following traditions rather than God and God's commands and God's words. Listen, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm not thinking of anything specifically in my mind, you know, to, to, to be hard on anyone about it. I'm just saying this. If there are things about our culture today or things about traditions of a way that, you know, a person was brought up. But it's contrary to what the Word of God says. You should follow what the Bible says. If a pastor in a Sunday school class or a pastor in a church service can, you know, preach to you the Word of God and showed from you the Word of God that here are some things that God says for our life. This is what God wants us to do. Then you should do what God's Word says. If it is plain in the scriptures or whether there's direct commands or even principles that guide what our decision making should be, we should follow God's word. And as you read God's word, as you study God's word in your home, when you learn that there's something that God has commanded or something that God desires and wants for our lives, and it's maybe contrary to some tradition or it's contrary to something in culture, you should follow what God's word says. Follow what God's word says. You say, but, but we didn't do it like that in the country I came from. It doesn't matter what country you came from or what country you're in. We should do what God says. I don't want to teach you to do things a Canadian way. I want to teach you to do things a Bible way. And, and, and don't, don't ever get this opinion of, well, we didn't do, the, do things like that in the last church I came from. Well, if it's what the Bible says, what the Bible teaches, we should do what the Bible says, right? We should do what the Bible teaches. We should follow the Word of God. When we start following traditions instead of obeying God's commands, then it's possible for us to go to, go to church and be like we're worshiping God, but yet have a heart that's far from God. It shouldn't be like that. If we're going to have a heart for God, that means we obey His commandments. That means that as you read and study God's Word, as you hear God's Word uh, preach to you, you follow what the Bible says. You do what God's Word says. You follow God's commands. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? By following traditions instead of obeying God's commands. Secondly, by only paying God lip service and not truly loving the Lord. By only paying God lip service. In other words, with your lips you say, I love you, God. Uh, with your lips you say, oh God, you're so wonderful, you're so good, I'd do anything for you. Uh, with your lips, you, you, you know, you attest your loyalty to Christ and your loyalty to God and your, your commitment to God. You pay God lip service. But God knows it's really not true. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? By only paying God lip service. Where we say we love Him... We sing, we sing in a church like ours. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. We sing it. We say it. We tell God that we're loyal. We tell God that we love him. But God knows by our behavior, by our actions, by our affections, he knows it's really not true. We pay God lip service, but we don't truly have a heart for God. 
we don't truly love the Lord like we ought to love Him. Look what the Bible said back there in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8. Matthew 15 and verse 8. Even going back to verse 7, he says, Ye hypocrites. He says, You're hypocrites. It's all talk. It's all talk. With, to with God, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Don't just pay God lip service. Prove it. Prove it. He says, Ye hypocrites. Well did Isaiah, Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people, verse 8, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth. They draw nigh unto me with their mouth. And honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You see, God sees right into the interior. God sees the inside. God knows what in our heart, what's in our hearts. And God knows that if it's just words with us, it's, it's just lip service with us, it's just an expression with us, or if it's real in our heart, it's true in our heart, do we truly love Him? Don't just pay God lip service. Make sure you love the Lord your God. Love Him with all your heart and soul and strength and mind. Turn with me over to the book of 1 John towards the end of your, end of your Bible, towards the end of the New Testament. 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 15. 1 John chapter number 2 and verse number 15. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Only paying God lip service and not truly loving the Lord. In 1 John 2 and verse number 15, the Bible says this. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That verse speaks to me in this sense. If you've got the love of the world and a love for the world in you, then you don't have a love for God in you like, like you think you do or like you, like you might say you do. No, sir, no man can serve two masters, right? How can we say we love God but at the same time be deeply in love with the world? How can we say we love our Lord Jesus Christ but yet we love our sin and we, we love the sinfulness of this world? We love the things of this world that, that God's word would say they're sinful, they're wrong, they're wretched, they're unclean. Love not the things of the world, if, and neither the, and love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, love the Father's not in him. Listen, we can't be in love with the world and be in love with the things of this world and still truly be in love with God. It's impossible. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? By following traditions instead of obeying God's commands. By only paying God lip service and not truly loving the Lord. Number three. Perhaps you, you never gave your heart to God. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe you never even got saved. Maybe you never even turned to the Lord. Maybe you never trusted Christ as your Savior. That, that could be one thing. You're going to church and not having a heart for God. Maybe you never got saved. That could be one thing. Or maybe, maybe you gave your heart to God and, and later took it away. Gave your heart to God and later took it away. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 12. Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 12. This is a, this is a, a sobering message and a serious message. It's not a, a nice, sweet Christmas message. And I'm sorry about that. That, that might come next week. But, but listen, I want us to truly have a heart for God. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 12. Matthew 24 and verse 12. The Bible says this. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because iniquity, those things that are sinful and wicked in our world and often sinful and wicked in our own hearts and lives. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Cold. Listen, do you find your love for God growing cold? Do you, do you find your, your love for God growing dim? Do you, do you find your, your love and fire and, and that heat and that passion for God? Do you find your love for God? Do you, do you find it just, just growing weaker, growing fainter? 
Is your love for God what it ought to be? Or has maybe sin crept into your heart and life and sin crept into different areas and it's, it's been causing your love for God to, to grow cold? The Bible says it's possible. I mean, it's possible for people that sit here in church. It's possible for somebody that stands here behind the pulpit. It's possible for us as Christians that uh, we can go to church and act like we're worshiping the Lord or sing that we love the Lord or say that we love the Lord, but really not love the Lord like we should. That really our hearts been growing distant from the Lord and our hearts been growing cold. Maybe because of a love for the world, maybe because of a love for sin, maybe, for th maybe because of things in our life that ought not to be there. Do you find your love for God growing cold? Have you maybe been falling in love with things of the world? That's why we're warned in Proverbs, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. We've got to guard our heart. Satan doesn't want you to have a heart for God. Satan doesn't want you to, to follow that great commandment of loving the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, and mind. He'll do all he can to steal away your heart from God. Or to guard our heart, keep our heart. Colossians chapter 3, look there with me. Colossians chapter 3 in the New Testament. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Colossians chapter number 3. And verses uh, 1 to 3. Colossians chapter 3 and verses 1 to 3. The Bible says this. God's Word says this. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. If you've been saved, you're risen with Christ. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus, okay? It says in verse 2, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. If you're risen with Christ, your affection ought to be on the things of heaven, not on the things of this earth. Verse 3, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Is your love for God growing cold? Is your love maybe been being turned aside and you, you've fallen in love with the world or you've fallen in love with some sinful thing, some sinful pleasure? It's got a grip on you. It's got a hold on you. you. Find yourself more loving and chasing after and pursuing after things of this world or pursuing after God. How is it possible for us to go to church like we're worshiping the Lord and have a heart far from God? Number one, by following traditions instead of obeying God's commands. Number two, by only paying God lip service and not truly loving the Lord. Number three, maybe we never gave our heart to God or maybe we gave it and took it away. Our love's growing cold. Our love for other things is growing stronger. Turn with me to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, the Gospel of Luke. Is it perhaps that you've been neglecting time in God's Word daily? That will help your, your love for God to grow cold. Have you been neglecting spending time with, with Jesus? Have you been neglecting spending time in prayer? Have you been neglecting walking with God? Have you been neglecting uh, reading the Bible? Listen, if we don't walk with God and maintain a closeness and a fellowship and a relationship with Him, you won't have a, a closeness of heart to Him like you ought to. As a husband and wife, if we don't communicate and we don't talk and I don't talk to her and I don't listen to her and so on, would our, would our relationship be very happy and good? No. Be rotten. And how can your relationship with God be good if there's no communication, if we're not talking to Him and we're not listening to Him and we're not spending time in God's Word and we're not spending time in prayer talking to Him? Have you been neglecting time in God's Word? Have you been neglecting walking with God and spending time with Jesus? Luke 24, beginning there in verse 13, tells us a little story. And read it with me and notice what it says. It says, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about a th uh, three score furlongs. And this was some disciples, followers of Christ. It says, And they talked together of all those things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near. They were actually going to have Jesus in their presence here soon. And for a little while, they're not, not even going to know that it was him. How is that possible? Well, people that didn't know him too well, right? It says, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. 
but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another, as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, in word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and the our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel and beside all this. Today is the third day since these things were come. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which went, were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women, and said, but, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe. Jesus had told the disciples, hey, I'm going to be killed. I'm going to be crucified. It says, verse 26, Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, Old Testament scriptures, he expounded unto them uh, in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. How the Old Testament the scriptures prophesied of all that would happen. It says, verse 28, And they drew nigh into the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. They were going to stop. Jesus was going to go further. But they said, Stay with us. Jesus, please stay with us. We wanted more time with you. Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him. They finally recognized here that it was Jesus. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? Listen, spending time with Jesus will do something for you. Spending time with Jesus, walking with God, spending time in prayer, spending time in God's Word, communicating with Him. It'll do something for your heart. It'll help your heart to stay close to God. It'll help your heart to stay right with God. But when we neglect it, our heart begins to drift. Our heart begins to grow cold. Listen, we've got to spend time with the Lord. We've got to spend time in His Word, spend time in prayer, spend time with Jesus. Our heart will not be close to God. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Number four, by allowing other things to become your gods. Turn with me back to the Old Testament. Just the fifth book of the Bible, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 5. Deuteronomy, chapter number 5. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? By following traditions instead of obeying God's commands? By only paying God lip service and not truly loving the Lord? By maybe the fact that we never gave our heart to God or we gave it and we've taken it away? And maybe your heart's drifted, maybe your heart's become cold. Maybe you've been neglecting the Lord. Number four, how is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God by allowing other things to become your gods? By allowing other things to become your gods. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse number 7. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. God warned his people. Nobody else is supposed to take my place. Nobody else is supposed to take my place. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 11 with me. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse number 16. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 16. It says, take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourselves. Guard your heart, right? Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived. And ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. What a verse, right? 
Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Now I understand that, that for the most part when this was first written, it was talking about other false gods, the gods of other nations and people that make themselves statues and idols and so on. And we see that in our day still. We see people with their little statues and idols and people that offer incense unto idols and so on. And they've got other gods. But may I say as well, we all know it's so true that we as a Christian can say we love God. We could go to church, but we could let other things become little gods in our life. Some men, some ladies get so wrapped up and consumed with making money that that, that money becomes their little G God. Becomes their passion. Becomes what consumes them. Some people get so wrapped up in a career and trying to be successful that it becomes their God. Some people go get, get so wrapped up in sports that it becomes their God. Some people get so wrapped up in, in, in one of the many other things that it, that it becomes their God in life. It becomes all that they think about. It becomes what they live for. What they, what they live and breathe and eat and drink and sleep and so on. It's what consumes their thinking. They don't think about God. They think about sports. They don't think about God. They think about shopping. They don't think about God. They think about making money. It could be lots of things. And only you know in your heart. Is there something else that's become a little God in my life? Is there something else that I'm passionate about? Is there something else that I find myself thinking about an awful lot in life? Listen, if there's things that we think about more than we think about our God, it, it can become a little G God in our life. Or it has become a little God in our life. There are things that consume us. Our time, our attention, our heart, our mind, our focus. It's what we live for. It's become a God in our life. Listen, the Lord God said, that's what of no other gods before me. How is it possible? You can go to church, but yet have a heart far from God by allowing other things to become your gods. Your gods. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Number five. Turn with me over to the New Testament. Look, at, look with me at Hebrews chapter number 3. Hebrews chapter number 3. It'll be near the very end of your Bible. Just there's a few books after it. Peter and John, Jude, Revelation. Look at Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews 3. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? By following traditions instead of obeying God's commands. By only paying God lip service and not truly loving the Lord. Or maybe it's perhaps that you never gave your heart to God, or maybe you gave it and taken it away. Maybe your heart's drifted from the Lord. Maybe you have neglected the Lord. Number four, maybe you allowed other things to become gods in your life. There are other things that consume you, other things that you dwell on. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Number five, maybe you've had a heart that has been hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Maybe you've had a heart that has been hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. And we see that here in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12 and 13. It says there, take heed, brethren. Take heed, pay attention. Pay attention, Christians. Pay attention, brothers. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Listen, we need to be exhorted. We need to be encouraged here. Hey, don't let your heart become hard. Don't let your heart become uh, deceived by the, by the wickedness of sin, by, the, by, the, by sin and so on. Keep your heart for God. Keep your heart for the Lord. Maybe you've had a heart that's been hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Again, guard your heart. Right? Satan is after your heart. Satan's after my heart. Listen, if Satan gets my heart, Satan gets your heart. Don't you think that's going to hinder, hinder the cause of Christ? Don't you think that's going to hinder my life from glorifying the Lord? Don't you think that would hinder some other people that I might be able to influence to also love God and live for God? If I don't have a heart for God, if I, my heart becomes cold... Listen, we've got to constantly be on guard about our heart, lest our hearts be deceived by, the, by the, the, the wickedness of sin, by the deceitfulness of sin. Our heart is not as good as sometimes people make, make us think it is. Our heart can easily be deceived. The Bible says, I think it's in Jeremiah, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 
Listen, our hearts can become hard. Our hearts can be deceived by sin. Our hearts can be pulled away from the Lord. And we don't want that to ever be the case. I want to have a heart for God. I want my children to have a heart for God. I want you to have a heart for God. I don't want you to play, play Christianity. I don't want you to come to church and worship the Lord and not have a heart for God. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Maybe you've had a heart that's been hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Satan doesn't want you to love God. He doesn't want you to love God with all your heart the way you're commanded to do. Turn with me to the book of James. If you're in Hebrews, just go a few pages to the right. A few pages to the right and go to James chapter 4. Amen. If you drink coffee in your home, husbands and wives, you should make your husband make it for you every morning, right? Because the Bible says Hebrews. Amen. Hebrews. Praise the Lord. I'm funny. All right. James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Amen. And look at verse 14. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Maybe you've been living your life for things that don't really matter. Maybe you've been living your life for things that don't really matter. In James chapter 4 and verse 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You don't know if you're going to be alive tomorrow. You don't know when you're going to stand before Christ. You don't know when you're going to breathe your last breath. You don't know when you're going to get sick and not be able to do the things that you do now. You don't know any of that. It's great to say, well, I... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve the Lord one day. I'm going to get my heart right with God one day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live for this one day. I'll do that one day. You don't know that. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanisheth away. Verse 17. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Listen, what's your life? It's but a vapor. Shouldn't we live our life for things that matter for eternity? Shouldn't we live our life for things that will make a difference? Shouldn't we live our life for things that really matter? Listen, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. If you have opportunity to do good, do it. If you have opportunity to witness, do it. If you have opportunity to pray, pray. If you have opportunity to help someone, help them. If you have opportunity to share the gospel, share the gospel. If you have opportunity to help a missionary, help them. If you have an opportunity to go to church, go. If you have an opportunity to read your Bible, read your Bible. If you have an opportunity to pray, do it. Do it. Brother Eric Mikwa had a nephew in Thailand that just maybe a week and a half ago or two weeks perhaps now was in a motorcycle accident, went into a coma. Since then, he's, he's come out of the coma and, and so on, last we heard. But we, we don't know if that man's going to live or die. We don't necessarily know that man's future. Brother Eric's Mikwa, Mikwa's nephew, I'm sure he's not that old. Listen, you, you, there's no guarantee of tomorrow. Are you going to live your life for things that really matter? How, how, how would it be possible for you and I to go to church and have a heart far from God? By living for things that don't matter. Things that don't matter. Things that don't make a difference for eternity. Things that don't make a difference... Maybe you've been chasing foolish pursuits that are really just empty and vain and worthless and, and meaningless. You know, it's possible that we can just chase after things and pursue after things that don't matter. We can chase things and pursue things that will just be vain in the end. They'll all be vanity. Wasn't that what... what uh, um, what's his name? Solomon said in the book of Ecclesiastes. He lived for a whole lot of things that he thought would, would bring him pleasure and so on in life. But at the end he said, it's vanity, vanity. All is vanity. It was empty. It was meaningless. It was, it was worthless. Turn with me back to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah. 
I'm going to read a verse to you there, Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse number 5. The Bible says this, Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and are walked after vanity, and are become vain. The message from the Lord was this, What did my people find wrong with me? What, what did my people ever think was wrong with their God that rather than pursuing after me and following after me, now they're gone far from me. Now their heart is gone far from me. That they're just chasing after things that are, that are vain. They're walking after vanity. They're walking after things that are really just empty. They're, they're hollow. They're vain. They don't matter. God's heart is broken as He longs for His people to come back to Him and to love Him and to live for Him. Have you been chasing foolish pursuits that are really just empty, vain, worthless, meaningless? Things that aren't going to matter when you stand before God one day? Things that really bring no glory to God? Oh, they might bring you a little bit of pleasure and happiness in the, in the time being. But do they really help develop your life for the glory of God? Do they, do they make some kind of eternal difference or eternal impact? Or is it really just a waste of time? We've got to think about our lives and what we do, right? How is it possible for you to go to church and have a heart far from God? Maybe you've lived for things that really don't matter. Things that will just end up being vanity, vain, empty. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Number seven, maybe you're not giving God control of the reins in your life. Maybe you're not giving God control of the reins in your life. By the reins, I mean those things that you'd, you'd have on a horse, a rider on a horse. I had to put in a bit and a bridle on the horse's head and, and, and the rider of the horse could have some reins coming from that. Some ropes coming from that, if you will. And those reins are what are to guide the horse and direct the horse. If you're a, a skillful rider, you can maybe just use your hands and touch them here and touch them there. But you know what? If you've got those reins, that's how a rider is going to direct the horse and have him go to the left or go to the right or slow up or... Those reins are important because they're what helps to guide and direct. Look what the Bible says here in Jeremiah chapter 12 and verse number 2. Jeremiah chapter 12 and verse 2. Maybe the problem is that you're not giving God control of the reins in your life. In Jeremiah chapter 12 and verse number 2. The Bible says this, Thou hast planted them, yea, they have taken root, they grow, yea, they bring forth fruit. But notice this, Thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins. You're, you're near, God, in their mouth, but far from their reins. Maybe you're not giving God control of the reins in your life. Maybe God's not in charge, you are. You are. In Jeremiah here, he's writing about wicked men when he said that the Lord was, was near to their mouths. The Lord God was near to the mouths of these people. They prayed. They sang. They worshipped. Oh, God was near to their mouths. He was on their lips. They could talk about Him. But the Lord was far from the reins. They didn't let God get anywhere near holding on to the reins in their life. God, get away, get away from me. You're not going to hold on to the reins in me. You're not going to direct me. You're not going to tell me what to do. What a shame that God could be near to our mouths and on our lips so we could talk about Him, sing about Him, tell Him that we love Him, but yet be far from having a handle on the reins in our life, guiding us and controlling us and directing us. Listen, God wants to direct. He's our God and He's got a right to do that. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge Him. He shall direct thy paths. Are you letting God have control of the reins in your heart and life? Is God directing you? Is God guiding you? Is God leading you? 
How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Maybe you're not giving God control of the reins in your life. You're not letting God be in charge. You're being in charge of your life. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Here's the last one, number eight. Turn with me over to the, the book of Matthew again. The book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Maybe you're not investing your treasure in God's work. Maybe you're not investing your treasure in God's work. Look what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 19. Matthew 6 and verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Isn't that a blessing? If you've got treasure in heaven, nobody can ever take it away. All the treasure that we gather up on this earth, when you die, it's gone. It's left behind. You can't take any of it with you. But the treasure that you send on to, ahead to heaven, that, that's lasting treasure. That'll be eternal rewards. Eternal treasures. So don't lay up for yourselves treasures upon earth, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, God says. And then look at verse 21. Verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Do you know that what you put your treasure into is what you're going to love? The Bible doesn't say here that what you love, you'll put your treasure into. It says what you put your treasure into, that's what you love. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I don't, it doesn't matter what it is, what example we could look at in anyone's life. But if you invest a lot of money in something, you're going to love it and pay close attention to it. Those, those, those men that, well, no, they weren't doing it this morning, but those men that, you know, on July, some Sunday in July, they were, they were out there. They, they pulled their Maserati out of their garage. They had it out in the driveway on a nice sunny day. And they spent... Oh, I was already clean pretty much, but compared to our vehicles. But they spent, you know, three hours out there on the driveway just washing that thing. Nice soft little bath, polishing it, waxing it, just making that thing shine like a beauty. You know why they love it so much? Because they put a lot of treasure into it. We love the things we invest our treasure in. Some people love their collections or the collectibles because they invest a lot of treasure in it. A funny story just popped in my mind and I've told it before, but I remember early in our church, a family that came to church and just good people. God worked in their life in a great way. And uh, they had a, a nice home and some nice things and family had given them nice things and so on for their wedding. And they had a beautiful dining room table. I mean, I'm sure it was a very valuable, very expensive dining room table. <laughs> and one day, I, I think it was when they went to hang up another beautiful chandelier above that table. You know, hang a nice little chandelier, a nice light above that table. The chandelier fell and, and marked up the table. Now, as just a new Christian at that point, oh, that bothered him so. That bothered him so much because something so valuable, so precious, that cost so much, it was so dear to his heart. You know what, we get, we pay a lot of attention to things that we've invested in, things that we've got money in. 
Some people will watch the stock markets and things with, with great attention because they've got a lot invested in it. And so they love it. They, 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 their heart's attached to it. Do you know what giving does? Giving to the Lord's work? It, it ties your heart to it. If you say, Pastor, I want to have a heart for the Lord. I want to love His work. I want to love the church more. I, I want to love God more. One way that God says you can do it is by giving. Because where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You want to love God more? Give more to God. Give to your church. To take care of your church. Give more to missions. Give, give more to the Lord's work. Giving ties your heart to whatever you put your money into. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Maybe you're not investing your treasure in God's work. If you'll invest your treasure, your, your hard-earned money, if you'll invest in the Lord's work, you'll, you'll love the Lord's work. You invest, invest in it. You, you'll, you'll love it more. You'll love the Lord more. I promise you, you will. How is it possible to go to church you know, to be, we're worshiping God and we're, we're living the Christian life. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God by following traditions instead of obeying God's commands? Set aside your traditions and follow what God says. Follow what God says. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? By only paying God lip service and not truly loving the Lord. By your lips, you, 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 you espouse your loyalty to Christ. You speak of your love for God, but God knows that it's not real. By your actions, by your behavior and so on, you don't truly love the Lord. Let's change that. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Well, maybe it's that we never gave our heart to Him. Or maybe we gave it and taken a, took it away. Maybe we've drifted from the Lord. Maybe we're not walking with the Lord like we should. Maybe we're not spending time in God's Word or spending time in prayer. Maybe your love's been growing cold because of iniquity and sin in your heart and life. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? And we start allowing other things to become little gods in our life. Other things become our focus. Other things become our, our, our affection and our attention and, and so on, what we will give our attention to. Other things become our gods. Other th things consume our mind. Other things consume our thoughts. Other things become our gods. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Maybe a heart that's been hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Not, listen, it is so much better to just get right with the Lord. It is so much sweeter to be right with the Lord and, and things are uh, confessed and forsaken and forgiven. Listen, God still says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You can go home and read 1 John 1 this morning. It's a great chapter, right? We can't say that we walk in the light, but also, you know, truly walk in darkness. If we're going to have fellowship with the Lord, we've got to be right with the Lord. Confess our sins. Don't, don't let your heart get hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Listen, sin in your life and sin that you don't want to confess, sin that you don't want to just get right with the Lord about, that is going to hurt you. Keep you from having the relationship with the Lord that you should. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Maybe you've been living your life for things that don't really matter. Maybe pursuing after things that are just in the end vanity. They're vain. They're empty. They're meaningless. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart far from God? Maybe you're not giving control of the reins in your life. Maybe you've been bucking. You're a wild bronco and you've been bucking. And I don't, I don't want a rider. I don't want God telling me what to do. I don't want God directing me. I'm going to do what I want. Why don't you just 
tame yourself down and let the Lord have his way in your life. Let God hold on to the reins. Let God lead you and guide you and direct you and do his will. How is it possible to go to church and have a heart fire from God? Maybe, maybe you're not investing your treasure, your money in, in God's work. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray that this, this message would be sobering to us as Christians, that we would truly be dedicated and faithful and committed to you, that our heart would be near unto you, that our love would be towards you, God, that our desire would be towards you. God, may we not let any of these other things come between us and you. May we not let any of these things cause our heart to grow cold, our love to grow cold towards you. God, help us to have a sweet and close fellowship and relationship with you. Help our love for you to not just be lip service, but to be genuine and real. Proven by our actions. Proven by our life. Proven by the things that we love. Proven by how we give. Proven, Lord, in all the other areas of our life. God, help us to truly love you as we ought to. May we not just be ones that come to church and have a heart that's far from you. Jesus spoke of those and called them hypocrites. God, help us not to be hypocrites. Help us truly to have a heart for you. May, may there be no question about our love for you, our devotion to you, Lord. Help me to love you better, God. Forgive me of my sin. Help me to walk with you faithfully. Forgive me of all the times that I've neglected you. I'm ashamed, Lord. Lord, I confess my sin to you and I ask you to forgive me. Help me to walk in sweetness and in closeness of fellowship with you, Lord. my heart to be true and pure towards you, please. In Jesus' name I pray.